Continuously renewed, the forests of Ireland grow and mature with each generation. The mature make way for the young and the cycle starts again. The forests are not only a wonderful social amenity, but also a valuable asset. The timber industry is young in Ireland. It is only in the last 40 years that a large-scale programme of afforestation has taken place. This was mainly state planting, promoted by the government and in recent years partially funded by the EC. Today the demand for timber is higher than ever and Ireland's forests are ready to supply. The mild, wet climate is ideal for the rapid growth of trees. Traditionally, horses were used to extract timber. In certain areas, inaccessible to machines, this is still the most practical method. The horse can haul poles through difficult terrain, depositing them on the forest road, ready for cross-cutting and collection. The arrival of the chainsaw and fast, highly skilled operators required a more efficient means of removing felled trees. The logical answer to this problem was the tractor, particularly when it was later used with a winch. Known as skidding, it is a practical system and therefore continues in some areas. If the operator is unable to drag the load, he can easily reposition the tractor, winch the log a little and then continue to the point of collection. Power and mobility combine to allow full pole length trees to skid easily across very rough ground. Another development came in the form of cable extraction. Confined now to awkward steep slopes, cable extraction, or skylining as it's sometimes called in Ireland, was introduced in the late 70s. It is a complex and time-consuming system to set up and use. Working in the same way as a cable car, logs are totally or partially suspended from an overhead cable and pull to their assembly point. Little damage is done to the ground or nearby standing trees. It takes a team of two, in contact with walkie-talkies, to ensure the process works smoothly along the line. After many years of research and development, it is now agreed that the most efficient harvesting method consists of a harvester working with a forwarder. The forwarder has been in use since the mid-80s. Using a crane and grab mechanism, it loads short wood into a carriage for transport. Like many excavators or farm machines, the cabin of the forwarder is designed for long periods of use. The operator has a fully adjustable seat, air conditioning, air cell phone and radio cassette player, as well as lights for nighttime work, and all the safety features you'd expect in such an environment. All these features are common to harvesters. Instead of a grapple at the end of a crane, however, the harvester has a sophisticated harvesting head. This can be attached to an excavator when the mobility and weight of the machine are not an issue, such as in clearfell areas. The harvesting head is able to grab a tree, cut it, control the fall, and then proceed to trim the branches and cut the tree into the desired lengths. A closer look reveals a saw blade and a tract roller or stroke drive mechanism to pull the tree through the sharpened double-edged debranching knives. The cut stump must be sprayed with urea to prevent heart drop disease. This is automatically applied through the chainsaw bar or a separate spray system. The urea is contained in a tank fitted to the harvesting machine. Back in the cab, the operator is controlling the hydraulic functions of the head by means of joysticks and an array of micro switches. Once the appropriate length of timber is determined by the operator, a pre-selection button is pressed. The tree is fed through the head and a computer, together with pulse counters in the drive mechanism, measure the length and diameter, lining up the chainsaw for the cut. Timber at the thinning stage is mainly divided into two categories. Larger diameter wood is cut to a length suitable for pallets and the smaller for stakes or pulpwood. This thinning operation will allow the remaining trees to mature and grow in value for use in construction. This mechanization is a far cry from the back-breaking work of the chainsaw operator. After a tree is felled, the operator must work along its length 
trimming the branches. Then measure, cut and stack the timber. However, the chainsaw operator will always be required. This can be for cutting large branches away from trees at the edge of the wood or working in areas where it's too difficult or too expensive for large machines to function. Pre-brashing, the removal of dense lower branching, may also be required to allow the harvesting head to grip the tree. Whatever area of the forestry business you look at, the changes have been immense. Mechanisation has brought with it the benefits and difficulties of modern technology. It has also brought challenges and opportunities. The recently announced OSB mill for Waterford and the expansion of the fibreboard factory in Clonmel will demand an increase in the volume of timber harvested. This will influence developments in forest harvesting for many years to come. Quilch's research and technology section is leading the way in harnessing this natural resource so that we can maximize its social, economic and environmental potential for everyone in Ireland. Thank you.